worship and happy birthday. Oh, it's not your birthday? Well, you're in luck because today we can all celebrate a very special birthday together, the birthday of the church, because today is Pentecost Sunday. And that's why I'm wearing my favorite pieces of red. Pentecost derives its name from the Jewish festival celebrating the harvest and the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, 50 days after Passover. 50 days after Easter, we celebrate the Holy Spirit as God's presence within and among us. In Acts, the Spirit arrives in rushing wind and flame, bringing God's presence to all people. Paul reminds us that though we each have different capacities, we are unified in the Spirit that equips us with these gifts. Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on his disciples, empowering them to forgive sin. We celebrate that we too are given the breath of the Holy Spirit and sent out to proclaim God's redeeming love to all the world. Today for worship, we'll be joined by special guest, the Reverend Eric Gronberg, PhD, Bishop for the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Today, Bishop Gronberg will be providing us with both the gospel and the sermon. Thank you so much, Bishop Gronberg, for being with us today. So now I invite you to get comfortable wherever you are, whenever you're joining us. Grab your favorite item of red clothing and join us as we sing, pray, and hear God's word. Let's celebrate the birthday of the church. Happy birthday, church. Now is the time to worship. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. And we did not know the way you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water of creation, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. The reading begins. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for Pentecost Sunday, according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that has been sent upon us. It is good to be with you on this Pentecost Sunday. I was asked by Pastor Veronica Weber-Smith of Emmanuel and Colleen to assist her in taking care of her pulpit for this week. And so I am preaching this specifically for the folks at Emmanuel and Colleen and at her request, but this also will be made available for Pentecost Sunday for congregations in our synod if you so desire it. As we have learned in this time already, once you put it out there on the internet, it's out there. And it's amazing the connections that can be made. What a gift that we have this ability and also this challenge in this time. When I was a young man growing up in Austin, Texas at my home congregation, Pentecost Sunday was one of my very favorite holidays of the church year. The biggest reason for it is that we celebrate it as the birthday of the church. And so if you have a birthday, what do you have? Well, we had cake. And so every Pentecost Sunday we would have a cake, white cake, red icing that said, Happy Birthday Church, and a flame on there, and the cake was good. So I loved Pentecost Sunday. But I also enjoyed Pentecost Sunday because we had this wonderful reading from Acts in which you never knew what unlucky soul would draw the reading and have to get up and start reading this and then get to the part. And if they hadn't practiced, they get to this part in Acts chapter 2. And how is it that each of us are hearing in our native languages, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, there's a fun one, and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. It was fun to see if they could make it through all of that, if they'd read ahead, which we hope they had. 
But also beyond that, I think that I had somewhere inside of me the gift of the Holy Spirit that helped me understand that this was no ordinary Sunday. Something was happening. Pentecost matters. Something was changing. Change. People say the church's favorite thing to say is we haven't done it that way before. We don't like change. Well, the reality is, friends, change is our lives, especially right now. Change has been a part of the church from the very beginning. There's been change. And oh, yes, we like to structure things and we like to slow down too much change. And change for the sake of just doing it isn't good, but change is real. And it happens to us. And oh, don't we know that right now? It's hard to believe it was only about 18 months ago when we gathered at Briarwood for our fall leadership convocation. And I had invited General Rick Lynch, retired Army General Rick Lynch, who's a member of Emmanuel and Colleen, and I invited him up to be our speaker because in his retirement he's written several books on leadership, including adaptive leadership. And I invited him up. I said, I need you to talk to our leaders. I need to talk about adaptive leadership in crisis. I need, we need to talk about how do we learn and change in this continually changing environment in which we live. Because it was 2018. And in 2018, there were going to be midterm elections, and there was a lot of political change and partisanship going on in our communities, in our societies, in our churches. And I felt we needed to equip our pastors to think about how they were going to lead through this change? How are they going to learn the skills to navigate with their congregations a potentially very contentious season in the life of our communities? And we had a wonderful convocation, and General Lynch's remarks were well received. It rained most of the time, I remember that week. We had a lot of rain, and so that was a thing. But other than that, it was a wonderful learning experience and we learned a lot about how to learn through change. And if I thought 2018 was going to be a thing, lo and behold, 2020 has came along and blown all that out of the water. Who would have imagined? I wouldn't have. Four months, five months ago, when we were just learning about this virus, I didn't think we would be here. Churches not worshiping in person now for several months, looking towards a future of uncertainty and not sure how this is going to play out. Change is here. And we have adapted. You have adapted. We are adapting each and every day. The fact that I am preaching this sermon two weeks before Pentecost so that it can be given out to you to be shared, that's change. That we've learned how to use new technologies that we learned ways to do pastoral care over the phone or on Zoom, that we've gone to some old technologies like phone trees and handwritten notes. We've learned and we've changed how we communicate and how we work together. And that's good. Change, change is important for us. And adaptive change means we have to learn together what is the new thing that we are doing. And that is what we are trying to do. And that is what we as synod are trying to equip congregations so they can equip community members and their lay people to say, this is an opportunity for us to change. We have been broken open by God's change. And that's what Pentecost is all about. Something new is happening. When we read from John 20, those words sounded familiar. They are. You've already heard them. They're about the days after resurrection. They're about Thomas. They're about the disciples. And this amazing change had happened. God had defeated death. Death had no more dominion over the world. They knew that God had been risen, that Christ had conquered the grave. And then John 20 comes along, and there they are locked away for fear. The change had happened, and yet they stay locked away for fear. God comes to us at Pentecost to break that open. 
Jesus breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit. In John 20, he said, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. That's what we say when we ordain a pastor to serve in word and sacrament ministry. We say, you have been given this, the office of the keys. Now go! But so often, so often we, we get small very quickly. And we stay with what we know. And we stay in one place. And after John 20 and the weeks to come, we find now the disciples still in Acts chapter 2. Where are they? They were all gathered in one place. The church had become parochial, staying in one place. The church was not fulfilling the vision that God had that it would go into the world to proclaim the mighty deeds of the one who brings life out of death. The church was in one place because it was safer there. And God comes at Pentecost and blows it open and says, this Sunday isn't just about cake and ice cream, even if that's good. This Sunday isn't about just a birthday party. This Sunday is about God's change coming and things no longer being the same. And that is good it's about reversing the curse of the tower of babel where the people thought they were so special that they knew how to build a temple to god and be a tower to god and be like god and god confused their language and now at pentecost god gives the gift of language to the church and sends us forth One of the amazing things we've had to learn in this time of adaptive change is how to go and learn new languages. We've learned new languages. Now we say things about we're going to Zoom later. We've learned new languages about YouTube and uploads and downloads. We've learned new languages about how do we connect with people who don't have those resources. We've learned new ways to communicate with each other. All of that adaptive change is possible because God equips us for this. Remember that. On Pentecost. On Pentecost, God equipped the church and gave it a mission to go outwards into the world because the old wineskins could not hold. And even if people thought that the reason they were speaking in tongues is because they've been drinking too much wine too early in the morning, The old wineskins don't hold. And God has sent the church equipped for its mission. Sisters and brothers in Christ in the northern Texas and northern Louisiana Synod of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Colleen, you have a mission. And the mission is not to hold on to what you had or to try to go back to what you knew or to get back to normal. The mission is to say, what is God doing with us in this time and sending us forth? Who is God placing in our way? that we are called to be in mission to? What language do we need to learn to reach out to our neighbors in our midst? This is a challenging mission we have, friends, but it's one that God gives us. We are living in a dynamic, changing part of our country. We have deep partisan divides within our communities. We have all sorts of challenges before us. And yet at the same time, we have all sorts of opportunities because God is equipping us for the mission. Jesus didn't say to the disciples, go all alone. No, he said, I'm giving you, I'm giving you what you need. Go forth into the world. Be the people that God wants you to be. Be the church that God is equipping you to be. Proclaim the good news to all people to look around and say, who is it that is around me? Who am I called to serve? That is our mission. And that is what Pentecost has done for us. And thanks be to God for that. I have watched over the last two months, three months, as our congregations have pivoted and turned and learned and adapted And you are doing an amazing job of this. And what I want you to hear from me as your bishop, what I want you to hear from this scripture that we have today, is that you don't do this alone, and you don't do it without resources. You do it equipped with the most important resource, God's mighty acts of power and the promise of baptism. 
In baptism, we lay hands on you when we pray the Holy Spirit. In ordination, we lay hands on the pastor, the word and sacrament leader, the deacon, the word and service leader, and we pray in the Holy Spirit. We invoke that spirit because we know then the spirit gives you the resources to do the work. And the work is gonna look different across our territory and across our world, but we are in mission together to proclaim the mighty acts of God. So go forth on this Pentecost Sunday. Happy birthday to our church. And God bless you and thank you for your work. Amen. Good morning. This is Pastor Donna Wright again, sharing with you my message for children and others. And because today is the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit first came down, upon the apostles, that is, those first people who believed in Jesus and his resurrection from the dead, I thought that I would share with you this special box, which contains some of the gifts of the Spirit. And some of them were shared by the uh, disciples who were gathered in Jerusalem that very long time ago when they started the Christian church that we are members of now. So let's see what's in these gifts of the Spirit. Well, I think the first gift of the Spirit is the gift of speaking clearly. Now, in that reading from the book of Acts, Peter and all the other disciples started speaking in different languages so that all the people around them who were from lots of different countries so they could understand them. So speaking clearly was the first gift of the Holy Spirit. And when we speak, sometimes it's easier for us to understand something when one person says it than when another person says it. And sometimes you can explain things better than people who are grown up. And that's a gift of the Spirit. That's a gift of God's Holy Spirit that you can explain things and speak clearly. Another gift of the Spirit is to speak truly to speak the truth, even if it's hard to hear and even if it's hard to say. And there are lots of examples in the Bible of people speaking truly and hopefully in your life too, because truth is another of the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, this is a good one. Forgive. That's a big gift of the Holy Spirit. And Peter had to forgive people today who accused him of being drunk. But he did. He forgave them. Another gift of the Spirit is to be kind. You all know about that. So being kind is a gift of the Spirit. So is being generous. And that's very close to being kind, isn't it? And so is sharing. Sharing is another gift of the Spirit. Now this gift of the Holy Spirit is a hard one. Be patient. And sometimes we're not always patient, are we? but we can pray to God and say, God, please give me a little patience today. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit that I really need today. And probably the biggest gift of the Holy Spirit is love. To love one another. And that can be hard sometimes because sometimes people make us angry and sometimes they bother us. And so again, we pray to God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now there's, uh-oh, 
There's one more in here. You know, there are a lot of other gifts of the Holy Spirit, but there's one more in my box. And it's chocolate. How did that get in there? I think God knew I really needed some chocolate today. So we thank God for all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, Unite us, 
Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we begin and end each day with prayers on our hearts. You know those prayers and hear them, even when we do not say them out loud. Listen now as we lift those prayers to you. At this time, I invite you to lift up to God the prayers of your heart, wherever you are and whatever they may be. God hears you and knows your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, receive this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit moves in, with, and through us always. Go in peace, friends. Celebrate the birthday of the church. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.